In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. may receive true freedom 
and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, So you, O son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked person shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If he or she listens to you, you have regained your brother or sister. But if the person does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if that person refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. O 
Well, my dear brothers and sisters, it's not easy. Today, there seems to be much more controversy and disagreements. Lawyers, of course, are happy, but it's we who end up having to deal with the anxiety and the stress and the losses. If people would only realize that life is so short and we shouldn't spend it arguing, blessed are the peacemakers. But how do we get to a place of peace? And how can we approach one another when we disagree or someone has offended us? In the gospel, Jesus very clearly wants us to work on our relationships, even those that may be difficult. Now, for the sake of love, we should confront and give one another the opportunity to realize our mistakes and then to correct them, especially when they're serious and when our silence may compromise the soul of a person or persons. Now, just like God warns Ezekiel in the first reading, we too have an obligation to speak up. To admonish someone is actually one of the seven spiritual acts of mercy. Sometimes all we have to do is show up. God can do the rest. And the courage will be there when we need it. And as Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, the Holy Spirit will give us the words to speak. Now parents have a duty to confront and to take the time to discipline their children. Proverbs 13 verse 24 states that he who spares the rod hates his children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Now at baptism, we were made prophet, priest, and king. As prophets, we admonish people and correct one another. As priests, we pray and offer sacrifices for one another. Even if the sacrifice means ending a relationship, that is causing us problems with our faith. Now, as kings and queens, we defend and we judge. Yes, we judge people's actions, but not their souls. And we fight for justice and a common good. Now, we may feel unqualified to do all these things, but yes, but Jesus chooses the weak to confound the strong. Now, St. Catherine of Siena was only a third order Dominican, but even as a young woman, she chastened popes and rebuked cardinals. St. Mother Teresa, a four foot something elderly nun who served the poorest of the poor, in 1985 spoke at the UN about the evil of abortion. And she confronted all the heads of state, and everyone paid attention. You could hear a pin drop. Now, the UN Secretary at the time described her as the most powerful woman in the world. Now, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and even St. Thomas More are all examples of people who confronted and spoke up for the cause of justice and truth. It takes courage. Yes, but we read the Gospel today that Jesus gives us the method that we should follow. First, we confront in private the person we have a problem with. And this means we don't televise it first to all our friends and the world. Now, there may be extenuating circumstances that we're not aware of until we speak to the person. And often we jump to conclusions when, even when before we know all the facts. But if we've spoken to them and they don't listen, we then get other concerned friends involved. And this demonstrates the gravity of the situation and that we're really concerned. And it's not just our bias that's making the claim. And if that doesn't work, we make it public. We take it to the church in order to convince our brother and sister that they need to repent and to change. Now, during this whole process, we only have their good in mind and the good of others and not our own ego. 
Egos can be stubborn and they can ruin relationships. And so we approach every situation with care and humility, knowing that we ourselves also have many faults. We know that life can throw us many curves. Sometimes our best friends or family members can turn on us or fall away from the faith all of a sudden. It's easy just to ignore them or to write them off. But the more we put things off, the worse it can get. And tomorrow, it may be too late. It may be too late for us to reconcile. And so the gospel shows us that Jesus wants us to keep our relationships honest and united in truth. And so he requires us to go and try to win them back. In James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, it says, My brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from the air of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And so it takes getting out of our comfort zone. But when we confront one another, Jesus is also there to help, to give us the courage and the wisdom to guide us in the truth so that together we can help one another flourish in the faith and in the freedom of love. And so may we all make the effort to reconcile and to live in peace with Jesus in our midst. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon the Lord, our refuge and strength in every age, and offer these prayers for ourselves and for all who are in need. That in his concern for his holy people, God will raise up many more men and women to serve the church in priesthood and consecrated life, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the wisdom of God will fill the hearts and minds of all in public office, that they will seek to promote the common good and respect the rights and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who serve in Catholic education may be filled with the courage to remain faithful to the gospel in the face of a society increasingly at odds with the truth of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all God's people, especially those who suffer from poverty, oppression, or warfare, will know that peace that only Christ can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That peace and reconciliation will prevail among all people, especially between the church and our indigenous brothers and sisters here in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's abundant goodness will be poured out upon those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or soul, especially our suffering parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, will welcome our deceased loved ones into their everlasting home, especially Antonio Calenda. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us offer our prayers to Almighty God through the intercession of our Blessed Lady as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 601, Jerusalem, My Happy Home, 601.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. And by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, oh. merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. banquet of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 6.7 in the Red Celebrate and Song book, Our Blessing Cup, 6.7.
let us pray. And that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Couple of notices this morning. Uh, first of all, what a wonderful opportunity we have today to have our choir back in full force after their summer hiatus. Um, I really do hope that everyone here appreciates just how blessed we are to have a choir like this, uh, because it's just at a, a meeting of all the priests of the diocese, and one priest after another was talking about how they have no music, or they have one singer, or they have two or three people in their choir. You know, we're able to hear some of the, the most beautiful music of our church's uh, patrimony because of this choir. If any of you uh, are interested in auditioning for the choir, please just contact Joe Carreri, the organist and choir master. Our parish picnic is this afternoon at 1 o'clock at St. Michael's School on McElderry Drive. Even if you don't already have a ticket, I'm assured that there is lots of food, lots of fun, and you can get tickets at the door. Tickets are $5 per person. Children under five are free. This coming Wednesday, Mass will still be at 9 o'clock in the morning, and there will be no adoration this Wednesday. The regular Wednesday schedule with Masses at 7.30 in the morning and 12.15 in the afternoon and adoration all morning resumes on Wednesday, September 20th. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Celi Shrine burn in loving memory of Emilia and Anito Rocco and Frank and Tina Rocco. Please call the parish office if you would like the lamps lit for your intentions or for a loved one. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, 